Welcome to a Bonzolium video. I call this the John Bonham engine, meaning it's a great workout, literally, physically, for your meter and just in general for your technique and stuff, but it's also physically a great workout. Like when I made my other vid videos, like drumming your way to hell, I still think people should get drum sets to work out on. It's like a workout machine. It is. But check this out. So in like Moby Dick, especially Moby Dick Live, well in Moby Dick Live, and then in uh, Days of Confused, toward the end of the tune, where after the last verse, as they go to the outro, like listen, 1973, 1975, there's like a, um, um. Oh, right before the suck it. Bottom loves this riff. See, I'm doing like the dotted eights there or a triplet feel. It's the bottom engine, I call it, okay? Now what happens there, and I've mentioned this in other videos, when bottom does this, the right hand is hitting at the same time as the left foot is on the hi-hat, okay? And then the left hand is hitting at the same time as the right foot. That's what happens there. That might be problematic for some right-handed drummers. As I've said in my other bottom triplet videos, I have a few of them, where I have the patented Terry Keating triangulate the triplet. Okay? Remember the hand-to-foot triplet. Three. Right? With left-handed drummers, I think it's more it's easier for them when they do the hand portion to go left to right. Remember, that's like the train beat. It, I mean, you can again, like I say, triangling the triplets, triangulating the triplets. See how my left hand's coming first? And you do like a train beat. With right-handed drummers, I found from comments and people I've met, it's harder for right-handed drummers, I think, for some reason, to do the left-hand lead prior to the right hand, okay? They find it easier to do the right hand first. See, I'm doing that. The right hand first. Hence triplets this way. Versus... Okay, so that might be the case for a lot of drummers. It might not. But that said, the relationship, it might somehow infringe upon this. The right hand hitting at the same time as the left foot. It's possible that right-handed drummers might find it me naturally wired to want to hit the right hand at the same time as the right foot. And the left with the left. I really can't do that. It does. I mean, I can, but it doesn't come to me. But I know in Bonhamville, when Bonham, because this is the Bonham channel, as, as far as I'm concerned, one of many on YouTube, but I like mine the best, um, Bonham does this. His right hand is hitting at the same time as the left foot, and his left hand is hitting at the same time as his right foot, okay? That's just the way it is. So remember... That's what he does there. It's so important. And once you get the ball rolling. Okay, I mean, it's the same thing, obviously, when a lot of drummers, when they used to do double bass, like in the old days, like now double bass is so fancy. Usually people, I don't play double bass, right? I certainly don't have one set up here. But you get more like the quick... Like, like the, a lot of the younger folks, the new style is to do like, like that kind of stuff with double bass. Well, in the old days, it was really more common just to kind of, like everything would be like, 
Like a, well, a mimic it here. That's kind of what everybody used to do. And obviously what's happening here with Bonham, doing, when I say doing the, the, the one, essentially, remember when I say if you're leading with your right hand, the one and a two and a three and a four and a, or the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, starts with the one with the right and with the left, same time. Okay, so you remember your right, so your arms are essentially going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bill where your feet are doing the opposite. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, that's clear. So my point is, is this. Sorry, a little peanut globule. I was eating some peanut. S peanuts. Um, it's a great workout. Bonham does it. Comes in very handy in Moby Dick. Uh... <laughs> It's the basic paradigm for it. And again, in Moby Dick especially, and even in the, um, the what I call the tribal pattern at the end of Days Confused, okay? It's like the whole mojo. Okay, what else was I going to say? It was important. It was a very important thing. Anyway, if you have a problem with it, what you can do... Oh, yeah, back to the double bass. I don't know back with simple double bass. If, if it's just... Remember, so the hi-hat could be a bass drum, right? So I just don't know. Let me know if you can put comments in here if you're a right-hand drummer, how easy or how hard you find this to do. Right hand, left foot, and left hand with right foot. Okay? So what you can do, just as a quick practice, where you can sit and do it the hard way. So right hand with left foot. Follow left hand with right foot. But another way to think about it is this. If your right hand and the left foot are hitting at the same time, well, that, of course, means your right hand and your right foot are hitting at different times. I mean, just like it's alternating with the left hand, the left hand is hitting the same time as the right foot. That means the right arm is alternating with the right foot. Okay? And the left hand is alternating with the left foot. And there's a neat thing you can do here. What eventually happens is that bottom... <clears throat> that eventually happens, that bottom used to do, would be to morph this into a triplet. Okay? So instead of like one E and a two E and a three E, so. Remember, see how I'm alternating those. One E, a two E, and a three E, and a four E, and a one E, and a three E. Or you can think of it as a triplet, what, like, like every third one. One E, or well, however you want to think of it. One E, and a three E, or one E, Okay, but that's like the whole mojo. Listen to Bonham doing that stuff. I mean, he does it in Moby Dick. Remember in Moby Dick Live? If you remember the bulk of what he's doing there, actually is if you listen time-wise, isn't so much the... It's really this. And then he pops into a quick... Remember, it's mostly, it is, which add the bass drum, okay, the bottom engine, it's very important, so please in comments let me know below if indeed you as righty drummers find it, um, if you have a problem with getting the engine started. I mean, I just, I've always kind of been a little, in a certain way, even though my left hand is so sort of walliated, um, you know, I have a tremor, a familial tremor. I do eat with my left hand. I brush my teeth with my left hand. Well, actually, I learned to do that because I really want to get more control of my left hand. So very carefully, I taught myself to brush my teeth with my left hand because the stakes are high. Like, you, if you're ever really going to force yourself to really try and fine-tune the thing is, if 
the way my left hand is, if I wasn't paying attention those days, man, I could jam that toothbrush to the back of my mouth. So I had to really carefully, like they used to say, Gene Krupa used to say, well, I shake hands with my left hand because I want to get my left hand to work out. Brush your teeth with it, man, because the stakes are high. You can mess up. You could hurt yourself. So really, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, I always just found it easier to do it. And it's just the way Bonham played it. Remember, the only reason why it matters is the way the drum set's set up, okay? The tom-tom tip is on the left side, so you get the easier. I mean, if the, you could move the tom over there if you're a righty in the snare and you get the same, you get more of a descend. You know, it does matter just in the sense, the way the, the drums are set up. Your snare and your rack tom are on your left side. So that's why when you lead with your left hand. It just sounds that way, okay? Anyway, but either neither here nor there. But let me know about the uh, how you are with the bottom engine. Okay, this is very important. It's a great workout, man. Actually, I do this to get in shape when I've been playing with the cashmere band. You can um, do that for a long time. Oh, wait, and that reminds me. See, just at the end there, I started getting into triplets. Bonham used to get it to triplets. So you start out with a straight up one and a two and a three and a four. That's where I got sidetracked. But you can bring in a triplet, one and a two and a three and a four. So I'll start out. Watch this. Hear that? So it starts out straight. So that can be, what happens is eventually, in this case, my right foot is still hitting, I'm sorry, my left hand is still hitting, my left foot, for the love of God, this here thing is still hitting at the same time as my right hand, but my left hand and my right foot disengage a little, they lock away, they move away from each other, okay, I'm not doing... <laughs> It's going to, since I'm leading my triplet with my left hand, that means that the bass drum is preceding the left foot. So instead of, it slowly moves to. So I think this is probably one of my more and more helpful videos. I'm going to still remake some of the older videos. Yeah, which, I mean, with all the good, but part of the thing is I've remade some of the older videos when I better sound at the time. So I have a few Fool in the Rain videos, one with my totally primitive sound, the one with kind of better sound, another one with kind of better sound. So now I'm going to have to kind of just remake them because this is just better sound, okay? So remember, more videos on the way. I'm playing September 23rd, 2017 at a place called The Broken Ore. It's a club outside northwest of Chicago. I'm playing with the Cashmere guys. We're going to videotape that one too. Th that one will be better though because we're going to get the full sound. Okay, we might close mic everything, but also too just from the audience. The bummer about the Carpentersville stuff is all you can kind of really hear is me, apart from me overplaying the crash cymbal because I'm, I'm so nervous. Plus too, when you play up there, the drums sound kind of dinky. Like sometimes it sounds like you're not playing enough. So you're like, I better start ask, you know, adding some crashes. I'm going to correct some of the deficiencies I noticed watching the video, the feedback loop. But it's also a three-hour show. A three-hour show. We're doing 90 minutes, 10 or 15-minute break, 90 minutes. Okay, it's a freaking workout, man. And, of course, thanks for pointing out to me that my earbuds were in the wrong. I was putting the, trying to get the left and the right and the right and the left in the videos I put up from Carpentersville and we were doing cashmere and freaking since I've been loving you. Which I'm gonna need those because I think we're we also do uh, not ten years gone. What do we do? In the light, that kind of stuff. With so anyway, uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget about the October twenty eighth. I'm doing a Bonzolium clinic, man, in Lancaster or Lancaster, Pennsylvania. October twenty eighth, Saturday from three to five at a place called Drums Etc. Check it out online or on Facebook. You'll see it there. Drums Etc. in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay, tickets, there's tickets, 20 bucks a piece, and they've been selling 
Been solid, man. I'm also raffling off my blue crylite, okay? It's a great drop. So again, more videos on the way. Please subscribe if you haven't. This video brought to you by Terry Keating Greatest Hits. Look for it on eBay.